The rendering is probably the hardest thing I ever went through. Like letting go and like releasing an attachment. It sounds fabulous. It just means that you're willing to let go and accept and acknowledge and be present and embrace and then trust yourself and trust the universe. My business is gone, my relationship is over. How do I know? How do I even know that like, I'm gonna be okay? But you know, at the core of it is like, I really had to just center back to myself. But really, truly, surrender means like I give up my worldly attachment to things and I trust the universe and I trust that life is actually going to provide for me something more amazing. And then letting it go, like letting my ego go with that. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because I gave up financial security and stability. And at first it was really hard to accept that because I'm used to a certain amount of like stability and structure and all of these things. And we really don't need as many things as we think that we do. But I just realized there's so much more enjoyment when you don't have to be putting out so much and then actually having to continue to create in order to bring that in as well. When you start creating from a sense of like trust and flow, your world lights up. I'm just focusing on the vibration and the energy that like, it's just like igniting inside of me. Welcome to the Awakening Entrepreneur Podcast. This show is for entrepreneurs. They have chosen to define their life beyond the material. They have followed their soul on a hero's journey towards the mystery of the spiritual. I'm your host, Garrett Newman. Each episode will be learning from awakened entrepreneurs and spiritual thought leaders. They have broken through the mold of being ordinary to extraordinary, challenging our paradigm, shining lights to the dark, giving hope when there is doubt. The moment of truth is upon us. It is time to transcend our world from fear to love. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to this week Awakening Entrepreneur Podcast. By geez, we've got someone that's super amazing, a soulful sister of mine. She's been a restaurant, a realtor, an entrepreneur. But most importantly, such a beautiful, amazing soul. She touches the lives of people around her and with the internet, people around the world. She may not even know it yet because if I was to encapsulate her journey, you can talk about all the accolades of her world-famous restaurants. has been on numerous TV shows, a lot of different awards. I think like more than 50 different awards of all different walks of life. It's based in Hawaii. It's called The Restaurants. It's an amazing experience in terms of not just a dining experience. I'll let her explain it a bit more. But something happened in this awakening journey. It shook up the foundation of her life, in her career, in her business, in her relationship, in her whole life. And in the traditional paradigm, we would say, holy beep. And that's like, <laughs> it's a bad thing. But for someone to see through that and see the beauty in that, and fully experience the life as is, we've got someone that's walking the walk of surrendering and letting a flow of life just shine through. I feel so blessed and honored to host her on this podcast. We've got the amazing Mariah Brown. Hello, sis. How are you? Hello. Thank you. I feel so honored. And what a beautiful introduction. Wow. I actually um, set my soul on fire and I got really excited. So thank you for sharing all of that. It's definitely had um, lots of ups and downs and obstacles and many, many paths to cross. But I feel like at this moment in life, I feel very centered and happy. So Yeah, this is only the second time that, that we've chatted. But yet I feel like energetically wise, why I wanted you to be on a show so much is you've achieved so much. And yet in most people's eyes, you, you're like a mist of not just the world COVID crisis, but your own midlife mm-hmm. shakeup. I don't want to use the word crisis because you've got yeah. the word, the Chinese character, danger and opportunity. That's what the word crisis. So you see the danger, you also see the opportunity and you're like, 
morphing in your own time and space and where you want to go. So how has this COVID period or even this awakening period been for you? It has been, I'm going to use the word interesting. It's actually really fascinating. A couple of years ago, I had been in a situation where I was just literally laying in my bed and I was like, I am so successful and I feel so like incomplete. I just don't feel fulfilled. And I'm like, how can you be successful and have all these things and then not feel like passionate? And so I started this journey and actually I've gotten to this point where we've ended up actually through the experience of COVID having to actually close all of our restaurants. And it's been an interesting journey and an interesting ride to, I really was like at the peak in, in that business but I had lost my passion and my inspiration and I really kind of wanted to go in a new direction. And it was interesting because COVID showed up and kind of like, that's when you know the universe is really working on your behalf is really kind of just made the decision for me and said, okay, this chapter is closed and it's like time to go on. And then, and then all of a sudden the next day I woke up after we closed and I was like, oh my God, what happened? Like, who am I without this restaurant? Like, this has been, although I wanted to go in a new direction or a new path, and I don't actually really know what that is completely, I still was completely attached to that identity. And so I really had to like, over the last like maybe four or five months is like take that experience and really just do a deep inner journey. Can you talk us through a little bit of the identity and the accolades that you've received so we can give it a bit more flavor? I mean, it's really fascinating. I, I can't believe I started it when I was 24 years old and, you know, and when at 24 and I remember, you know, I know we all remember, but we're like, we're fearless and we're like, I don't care what I'm going to do. I didn't actually have a career path. Uh, I met my business partner and he's like, let's open restaurants in Maui. And I was living in Oahu and I was like, oh, okay. And at 24, you're like, I can do anything. And so we literally just opened these restaurants. He didn't even know how to cook. And the next thing you know, we were running three restaurants. And so my whole experience has like been like everything that I learned, I learned in the business. You know, I'd had other jobs, I worked at a bank and and done retail and, you know, just done these, you know, small little things. And the next thing you know, I'm like on a, like a full on like life course here in running a business. And it was amazing because we were doing something that's very traditional to Hawaii, which is like a plate lunch kind of concept. But we were the first one to actually plate them and make a full service restaurant with servers. And so we became really popular and what's really fascinating is by the time we were closing, we were serving 2000 people a day and we had always a 45 minute wait and we were the most popular place to eat and it all came from word of mouth we never ever advertised. So we are spent, our whole mission was like, we have to provide the best experience ever and we have to connect to our customer. And then we brought the traditions of Hawaii in and like we're serving this like culinary food that was just like fabulous. And then we end up being invited to the inaugural luau in Washington, D.C. with um, President Obama. We ended up on diners, drive-ins, and dives, um, brew dogs. Uh, we're on the travel channel for our fried spam musubi, which is like this traditional spam. You know, everybody knows spam. But actually, Andrew Zimmerman didn't even want to eat it. And it was really funny. It's like he eats bugs, but he's like not eating spam. So some of these, and, and, and it was just, it was all organic growth. And then I ended up getting like, you know, other awards, like Businesswoman of the Year for Hawaii. And I would just be like, it was like so humbling and like so confusing at the same time. I'm like, I'm just a restaurant owner. Like, why are people so excited? <laughs> you know? But it was like, at the end, I just realized like we were able to like really connect with the culture and with Hawaii and like really provide this space that people felt like they were coming to their own home. So it's like, in the end, I was like, oh, like, who am I going to be? without the kitchen, like, this is my life. This is my livelihood. This is like everything I've been. And, you know, I just felt really, really guided. And one day I woke up and I was like, you know what, I got to take me with me, like wherever I got to go. And then I think that was the breakthrough to come kind of out of the bottom. Cause at one point I just like hit that bottom and I just wanted to lay in my bed and like not get out. I was like, everything is gone. <laughs> and then that moment just comes and it's just like, someone's out, out in the universe is talking to me and like, you still get to go with you. And I was like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> you know, I want to touch on, you mentioned culture and I'm big on culture in my business. There's something unique that I'm sensing from the way that you serve your customer, the way that you connect with your team. 
what is the business about for you? Like beyond money, what was it at the time? It's like I just love people so much. Like my heart, like I just adore them, and so it was really. I think that was like my favorite part is like I always to the end still serve the customers. Like I literally was like on the floor, and for me it was like connection. And here we had built this like physical structure, but people would just come all day long, and like most of the people, like I ended up growing up with them, and eventually like employing their children, and then they're having children, and. And for me, I think my favorite part was like inspiring the staff because this was always everybody's first job. So, you know, you don't go work in a restaurant with any type of experience. You're usually like 16 and going like, I'm just going to have fun in life. And we would show up and we actually created this really, um, this culture where we would actually cultivate them and teach them all these life skills. And like my favorite part every day was like, oh, I'm gonna inspire them or like give them some wisdom. And whatever I was learning on my little journey, I would just like sprinkle that into the staff so it was like we were all really really connected and actually in the end like half of the people that work for us had been there for almost 20 years yeah so wow it was like it really had this amazing structure and the culture of hawaii is very open it's very loving like maui is considered the heart chakra so it, it makes complete sense that's beautiful and i guess in your spirit just wanted to help nurture people and help them be the best version of themselves you touched on yesterday that in 2018 you attended your first tony robbins event actually was it your first like personal development event or did you do any personal development or spiritual development prior to that oh no so i always was really into personal growth And actually, I would consider at that point in my life, just kind of such a low place. And I was really on a search from like, and I've always kind of been like that when I get to the part of myself that I don't feel like super happy, or I'm not ignited or something isn't like feeling right, I will always look and search for something to like bring that more inner peace and happiness. And I actually found um, Tony Robbins. And I was like, I like nine days before the business mastery event. I was like in my bed, like going, what am I going to do? Like, I don't feel happy. And, and I literally the next day just booked my flight. I had never been to a live event ever. This is my first Tony Robbins event. And I went in there and people were jumping around and they were so excited. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I found my people. Right. So I'm living on this little Island in Maui where there's like only 150,000 people plus the tourists that are coming in. And I was just kind of like, where's my people? And then I walked in that door and it like, I was completely committed for, you know, years after that. I'm like, this is my tribe. These are my people. And that experience literally, like I went in there for a business purpose because I was like, I could just be better in my business. And I had focused my whole life on business. Like that was before everything. It was before relationships. It was before family, like business, like that mindset was there. And then I, you know, the beauty of that experience is that I went in for business, it became a personal journey. And then the next thing you know, I'm this like gallivanting on this like spiritual journey, trying to find like oneness and inner peace and you know, all these other things. And I was like, huh. And now I arrived here. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, the same for me as well. The first event was the business events because it was so logical. I think like the marketing is like, if you don't get a million dollars of value within the first day or something, like you get your money back, man, how could you lose with that? Yeah, that's exactly why I went there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I guess you started learning more about yourself and like, I'm like the same. I started personal development when I was like 14 or something, like listening to the cassette tapes and, but man, the live events are different cattle, of like completely different. They are. I mean, it's so amazing. And it's like, we have a tribe and we have connection and we have like access to resources that I didn't have living in in such a small place. You know, Hawaii is big, but we're spread out so, so far. And so like actually having this community that you can like grow with and learn and explore. And then we're like traveling the world and we're going to this city and this country. And I mean, it was extraordinary. Like, it really opened our eyes in terms of like the diversity in business skills and different type of industries and different personality and around the world that you talk about the spiritual events and relationship events are what could be like, cause Tony not only teaches from what he has experienced, he's also learned from the best as well. Like, so the Alison Armstrong, the Byron Katie and, and oneness and all these teachings come in together through um, Tony. So, which is beautiful. 
You know what I love, and actually I was thinking when you were just saying that, is what Tony in that environment taught me was that I was still an operator in my business. And I didn't have the systems instructions that were necessary. And in less than three years, we doubled our revenue and we increased our profit margin by almost like 10%, which is amazing in the restaurant world world and then the next thing you know like I had this all this new freedom to actually and I hadn't even take days off like for me to take four days off of work was like no you can't even do that I remember being on the phone every day like are you guys okay and I had created a business that was so dependent on me that through that first couple years I was able to make it like independent on itself and then it opened the door to me being able to really really like know thyself is very like it's such a great term because it's like we're constantly learning about ourselves. And just when you think that you learn something like the next little like tidbit comes in or the next little like, like gift and you're like, huh. And so that like just really opened the door for like my spiritual journey and connecting and doing some energy work with like Master Co and John Amaral and, and traveling to Costa Rica. <laughs> it's like, wow. So you describe what I was um I guess relate to as almost at the start of the spiritual journey, like prior to that, like I haven't been religious at all. And yeah, I go to church, like maybe once every like five years or something, but people talk about the blessing and how beautiful it was, like, which is the type of meditation, I guess. And it's like at the end of the first blessing, people go, wasn't that amazing, Gary? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Just, I just went along with it how am I supposed to feel like I felt calm? Like, is that amazing? Okay, I guess you can say it's amazing. But like the first few times even going to India, like I didn't feel anything. But that was at the very beginning part, like giving a perspective that we weren't very spiritual or Zen-like or getting transcendental states. Was that kind of like your experience as well? Oh, absolutely. Here's what's really interesting. I'm just going to set the framework. So I grew up with a mother who was very, very spiritual. So our entire life was like her following her intuition and chanting and incense and all these spiritual things. And when I was growing up, that was not cool. And so I had really, really like, I think my whole like purpose was like, I just want to be normal. And I had this big, huge framework and I had boxed myself into just wanting to be normal. And so I had like, I had gone on this completely different path where, you know, I was like, no, no, no. And I had really shut down the spiritual part. And then I remember that I was at Date with Destiny in Australia and I'm like doing this meditation, this like oneness meditation. And I had like a past life experience, like remembrance. And I like came out of that and I was like, I'm telling my buddy, I'm like, do you believe in past lives? And I just started crying because I was like, it was so real and I was so connected to it. And I was like, can't make this up. Like, how can I emotionally actually be feeling this energetic connection to this experience? And she was like, I definitely believe you right now. (laughs) And I was like, okay. And that was the moment that really just opened the door to like, I'm living in this really like labeled boxed in reality. And there's like all these other things to explore. And and in the beginning, it was actually quite like, and sometimes I would actually get quite frightened. Like I would read these books and these experiences and I was like, started to go down the rabbit hole. And then sometimes I would just, I would just have to, you know, take a break for a couple of weeks because I was like, I don't even know how to digest all this information. As much as we can learn from spiritual teachers and books, like um, I remember like I was reading like Conversation with God as a, whoa, that, that's a crazy book. And I can't totally the power of now, all these like extremely wise teachings. But until you have your, I guess like your, your first major experience is still a theory, a concept, an intellectual idea. What you just described, at least the way that you've communicated, it sounded like, as if it's someone's gone through the first plant medicine journey, the first like knee death experiences that is just so profound that that experience, nobody can talk you out of it because you went through the journey yourself as yeah. if it's just as real, if not more real than this reality. So what exactly do you go through in your past life or what did you experience? Oh my God. Oh. And it's fascinating because you can't wake somebody up or you can't say it's time for your spiritual experience. And I really believe that we pick our moments because I had to have picked that moment. Like 
the way that the information came to me, and it was actually a, an experience of being a princess, like I'm gonna say in Hawaii, which kind of didn't really resonate with me. And I was in, in the beginning, and I was like, wow, this is so fascinating. And I actually was getting visions, like almost like slides of the experience. And then, like, um, people, I could actually see people's faces, but most importantly is like I energetically could feel it in my body. Do you feel and yourself I'm, as a third person observer, observing yeah. yourself, or were you actually in your past as the princess? I think I can feel both. Mm -hmm. So energetically I could feel the experience, but then I was observing, I was observing that experience, right? Like almost like almost like a hologram or you're just like the video screen is like on the wall and I was like watching a movie. And so Here's what's really fascinating. So I come out of that experience and then I'm like, I don't know who I can tell. Like, not really, I don't really know anybody with like this other information. And I actually like a week later went home and I called my stepdad because I was like, I'm definitely not telling my mom yet because she's going to be way too excited and she's going to want to like go down this path, right? <laughs> so I call my dad and I'm like, okay. And then this is the man that raised me. And I was like, so I had this experience when I was in Australia and I had this vision of being a princess. And he was like, were you so-and-so? And I was like, huh? He's like, do you remember being so-and-so? And I was like, yeah. I was like, how do you know that? And he was like, I was your uncle. He's like, I've known this for 25 years. And I'm like, have you told me this? I'm like, have we had this experience? Have we had a conversation like this? Because then all of a sudden that like, the, the mind starts to try to play its little trick where like, oh, well, I've, you know, this is, you know, been like infused in me. And he's like, no, I never told you I was waiting for you to remember. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? and he's like, do you remember who your mother was? Do you remember who your brother was? And I was like, oh, and then I was able to actually like tap into those experiences. And then it took me an actual month. And so then a month later, I tell my mom <laughs> and she was like, she's like, yeah, do you remember who I was? And I'm like, have you known this? She's like, I've always known this. I'm like, have you told me? And she was like, I've never told you. You know, they actually gave that actual like certainty and validation. And so that even actually opened me more up to that. And what's really interesting, I do have this really innate ability to be able to like tap into many past lives and sometimes for other people as well too. So wow. it's been, <laughs> you know, it's been, so what was your mom for you in that past life? She was my um, aunt. So her and my stepfather were married. She was actually a queen, but not my mother. It was really interesting. So I, yeah. And the princess actually died at really, really like a young age. So I think like in her 20s. But I can still tap into the energetics of that like experience. So when I need to be like strong and like in my power, and then I just will top into this like personality. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So did you subsequently have a lot more um, interesting conversation with your stepdad and your mom? Yes. Yeah. Before oh, you okay. wouldn't talk about any of this spiritual stuff. And my mom is actually, my mom's a healer and she actually has her own tribe and she does retreats and she's very, very connected uh, my stepfather is a coach as well. And so they were always kind of into this and on their path. And so this has actually created this amazing connection with my mom and I, where before I, I felt really disconnected from her because I wasn't really on Different the same channels. Path. Yeah. And so now it's really interesting because there's actually this bond between us that like surpasses any reality that I could ever experience. And we just have this like tremendous like connection and love and you know it wasn't always like that I was like oh she's so woo woo she's so this and you know and I had my like and I, and I wonder if it just comes from fear or we block it out I, I haven't really actually figured out how we even get there I know that um, one of my guests in the podcast um, Pauline Newen she's also like a very successful entrepreneur and restaurant art. like her restaurant in Australia is awarded the most um, awarded Vietnamese restaurant in the world. Um, and, and she's won like Telstra Business Woman of the Year, which is the number one business award in Australia. And her wow. daughter is similar to what you described, is resisting her stuff because like, she's way out there as an outlier. And she's like, from what she described, wants to be normal. And I guess like 
we have faith that whatever meant to is is perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think somehow there is an experience to be gained to be connected to the 3D, not just go all spiritual like right away when at, from starting from um, as a toddler, I guess. Mm. You know what's interesting is there's actually a couple um, like psychics and mediums who have actually told me that. I had actually hidden that aspect of myself because I really wanted to be grounded in this lifetime. And so that door would only open when I had like gotten to a certain place, let's call it, or like something had transpired. And so I really, and I have that too, because my brothers are not really like, like they get it, but they're not really into this, like all this like spiritual like development and they don't really have that curiosity. They're still very, very grounded and, yeah and i think like the whole premises of the awakening entrepreneur a lot of us are going through this journey even though we weren't woken up earlier the skills that we picked up the experience we gained as an entrepreneur i think a lot of those things will come into play in our role in helping to raise consciousness on for this planet whether it's it's marketing skills or people skills or building a business skills because what we didn't just come here to say hey let's transfer some energy and heal the world we could but it's partially it's also like what are some of the 3d skills that you learned and you picked up whether it's accounting marketing finance fundraising and then pulling people together and then use that together with your spiritual side your intellectual and your spiritual side combined together to do your task Oh, I think so. And you know, what's interesting is now you realize like business is a spiritual game and you can create like energetically and like money actually can move and flow so much easier. And it's fascinating that you say that because my intimate group of my friend tribe is we're all like exploring and discovering all of this information at the same time. So it's like, we all like said, okay, I'm going to meet you here at this time. And then we're all like little children about it too. Like it's just innocence and wisdom. It's like innocence. And that's my favorite thing. It's like innocence plus wisdom. It's like the childlike curiosity, free flowing, adventurous, fearless with the wisdom that we've like accumulated for the last how many years in our life and like bringing them together with this like innocent wisdom. And so it's really fun. So tell me what's a, an example of a conversation like with your mom now? <laughs> well, sometimes it's like, <laughs> yeah, she's way, you know, she, she started her spiritual journey in like the fifth, I guess the fifth, sixties. Uh, I think she was like 13. Right. So she's, so she has. Did your she grandma asked, or, or, or your, or her parents, were they like quite spiritual? Okay. No. Not at all. My mom is like a hippie that like left home at like 16 and traveled and <laughs> lived on the road. And she was just always so connected. So her knowledge is really, really vast. I would say that I have a different type of knowledge and it's not as developed as hers. So sometimes even I'm like, oh, that's fascinating. So, you know, we do fun stuff together now. Like <laughs> the other day I was like, there was something that I wanted to create. And she's like, let's tap into that. Let's tap into that part of you. And, and we just like went on this like really quick, like 15 minute, like guided journey and like tapped into that almost like quantum jumping, like tapped into that, like part of me that I needed to like, like ignite. And we did it and we like jumped out. And then she was like, this is so fun. I can't believe I get to connect with my daughter like this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so yeah. special. <laughs> it's really lovely. So um, now I want to uh, jump back to um, during this awakening journey, it didn't all go smooth sailing. Oh, wow. Like I remember past life and then suddenly you became all spiritual and enlightened and, and all these new <laughs> ideas. Talk me through the, some of the challenges that, that went through the journey. Oh, it's really interesting to be a witness to yourself and be an observer. And I think, at some points along that journey, I really took it hard because you also have to witness yourself and like who you've become, like not just the greatness, but some of the, you know, some of the, the darkness and some of the disempowering things you did and the ways that you've been. And, and so I think really having to like witness that part and really kind of doing like that deep dive into like my belief systems 
And especially my belief systems around like relationships and in my intimate relationships, I was really, really disconnected. Can you give me a a specific example? Of a relationship or of a... Or just any of the stuff that you had to face. You know, it's really interesting. It was, do you want to talk about my trip to Costa Rica? Yeah, so it was really interesting is... uh, I never thought that I wanted to do a plant medicine journey and a bunch of friends were going to Costa Rica and I was like, no, I'm not going. And in a week before everybody was going, I decided that I'm going to go on this venture and I am going to. Okay. What triggered you to change your mind? Was it in the calling? We were all sitting at lunch. We were in Cambodia. I was sitting there with Panash Desai and he was, you know, he was talking about like this experience that everybody's going to have. And it's about putting your ego to sleep and really getting to know yourself. And I'm like, I don't have an ego, but I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and actually, I was, quite, I was actually quite terrified of like, well, if you put your ego to sleep, does that mean like you lose all your drive and passion and your motivation? I'm like, this does not sound like a great idea. And I don't even know what happened, but 45 minutes later, I had my flights booked. I had my booked at the um, Rhythmia and I was like on my way a week later. And a couple of days before I went, I was actually doing a meditation and I had a experience of being a child and actually um, experiencing some sexual trauma. And what is absolutely fascinating to me, because at that moment, like I was just like, I was down and I was like, wait, what do you mean? How has this happened? Like, are you sure? Is this me? And it was so vivid that it was unexplainable. And by the time I got to Rhythmia, my whole experience there was about actually, um, it was kind of like a life review. It was kind of reviewing my life and actually brought all of that to light. I didn't even know that I was disconnected from myself because what happens in like sexual trauma, especially in children at such a young age is that like me personally, I was able to leave my body and I would become very disassociated. So it was like in that moment of you like have this like realization. And then at the same moment, I was able to experience like not even being present, not even being in my body and completely disconnected and disassociated. And so that experience actually like kind of just went in and like grabbed it and like highlighted it and almost like released it. And what's fascinating is that I didn't even remember that I had the the capacity to actually not remember something like that for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. But then again, I was in the right moment with the right tools and the skills that when it was ready to reveal itself, I would actually have like a vast variety of ways to actually move that through me. And so and you know, I've had to do a lot of like um, stuff about that over the last like year and a half and really like keeping myself out of fight or flight, reconnecting to my body, being present and like just trying not to escape my own self. So I think it makes sense. Like a lot of my experiences in relationship of why I would be disconnected, why I would disassociate myself and you know, I actually had this belief that relationships have to be hard and that love and pain, like love equal or pain equals love. And so I really had to get into my subconscious and actually take out that conditioning and programming and belief systems and actually like bring it back and center it to myself. Yeah. And I guess if I weren't listening to this conversation with a high level of consciousness, I would interpret this as, okay, there's some um, personal development stuff that I could do that I can apply hypnosis, NLP, some of these stuff to knock out some of the subconscious thoughts and behaviors and past traumas and events and stuff. But I guess my perspective in looking at things differently now is trapped energy. And unless it's being released one way or another, it's, it's going to be trapped. So it doesn't matter what skills and strategy you apply to it unless you purge it out somehow, whether it's through yeah. writing, talking, and or literally purging, it's still there. And it's yeah. going to resurface another time. And that's kind of, kind of like what led me to the plant medicine journey and some of the other stuff as well, because the skills and the techniques, it just didn't do it intellectually. I understand, okay, well, I've got these past behaviors and traumas. I, I need to fix this. And yeah. if I go to do a process like in, in that next few days or next weeks, it's gone, but then something else will come up because the energy hasn't been completely purged out. Yeah, I've actually found the different, and I've done other plants recently 
over the last eight or nine months that have really, that they're more heart opening. And I've really been able to energetically just like tap into that and do a lot of release. And I think one of the most profound things that's actually happened to me lately is I was actually afraid to feel feelings and I would like kind of like, like suppress them. And like one of the newest things that I've been doing is actually sitting in when the feeling comes up and actually acknowledging it and then actually feeling it and then allowing it to like transmute itself. Because it would make sense that like a child that experienced that would want to disconnect or disassociate. Like, I don't want to have to feel these things, but really like, and I think that's what some of these plant medicine journeys have done for me is allowed me to actually sit with them, acknowledge them, love like that part to me. And like, really just like, you know, it's like you acknowledge and then you embrace and then you just like, let it go. Yeah. You know, and it's an ongoing process, Right. (laughs) <laughs> you've touched on something really important because in a lot of our belief system and how we've been taught here, you shouldn't be upset over your sister doing this or your brother doing this, and you shouldn't be upset over this, or, or you should be stronger. You should be more disciplined or you shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't be pissed off. And so we suppress a lot of the things. Hey, you shouldn't laugh at that. Like all these things that belief yeah. system we've been conditioned to, to think about. So we haven't been taught to feel through something. And so what you resist persists, the yeah. energy is being trapped and is recirculating. Sometimes that is going to, like what you said, lie dormant for quite a few years or maybe decades, and then eventually it will come back up. And on the other hand, what you talked about transmuting the energy is once you allow time and space and, and oxygen and just feeling yeah, like- through it, yeah, yeah, you just feel the completion and that's beauty in it. Like I would have never thought that like I'm used to be this Mr. Happy and you need to be happy. You can't be sad. You can't be angry. But now like even with anger or fear or jealousy, like that is beauty in each one of those emotions. If you give it the time and space to do its thing. And once you give it time and I'm not talking about years or months or even weeks, it could just be minutes, moments, and just given that presence, mm-hmm. and that just dissipates mm-hmm. and transmutes into joy. It's amazing. In the beginning, it was uncomfortable, but the more that I practice it, I now can like feel through stuff sometimes in minutes, maybe 20 minutes max, but really just like bringing all of that like back into me and actually doing some like self-love and some beautiful self-nurturing and self-talk. Like, I'm proud of you. Like, you're amazing. Like, you're doing so well. And like, just really like thanking the body and just having this like gratitude. And, and then, it you know, eventually it turns into like being curious, like a child. You're like, are you feeling angry? I'm like, yes. But then now that I can connect to the feeling, it's like, I can feel this just fire inside of me when I'm like angry and I'm like, Ooh, that's kind of cool. But like not really trying to take it anywhere or trying to express it to other people, but just like being present with it or like, Oh, I feel some sadness or, Oh, this brings me joy. And it's really been great to like, the more that I practice just feeling my feelings. And I feel like this is even like phenomenal for women because we're really not like, we're really not taught to express our feelings. And then sometimes our feelings are explosions and, you know, we're constantly in like a constant state of emotions. Right. And as a woman, like ours are happening all the time. And so learning to harmonize those and like flow with them and not being the explosion is actually so beautiful because when you can just sit with it and be present with it and then like accept it, then like it just opens this like new doorway. And it's like one of the most profound things. And I'm like, I just want to like, I love women so much, you know, and like part of my purpose is to really help them like connect to themselves for self-love because they're, you know, we're grown up in, let's call it a masculine like environment. And now the, the feminine actually needs to come back. And actually I feel like the masculine with the feminine, like harmonizing together is actually just really going to like shift humanity forward. And so helping women like just like feel into their experiences and then in their emotion and like making it be okay to express emotions. Like I was having a call with my friend yesterday and she was like, I love that. I'm like, right. Like, she's like, I've been doing it too. Like feeling my feelings. Like I've never been taught how to feel my feelings. I'm like, that's so true. Me either. Like, it's usually like, go to your room or stop being that way. Or you're crazy or, you know, 
Very yeah, emotional. Especially this is what you say in such a masculine energy world um, that we've constructed and the belief system that goes with it. So a lot of the suppression of the feelings, especially for the feminine energy for a lot of females is many times more sensitive than the men. And that's nothing wrong with it. But in our model of the world, no, nah, that's wrong. Like you oversensitive, you yeah. behave in a certain way for irrational reason. But not understanding that the feminine energy operate a lot more on energetic level. And so they're a lot more sensitive, but they can also like, like heal and love and all these things is, is more powerful as well. I guess one of the questions I have is, where do you think that the emotions come from? Because I, I guess one of the challenges that we have in expressing the feeling is like, you did this to me. That causes me to be pissed off. And we're externalizing and thinking that the emotion triggers came from outside it is not something that's somehow circulating from somewhere what's your understanding of where does this emotion is being evoked from i think it's really interesting i think it's like what we're meant to experience on earth and in the 3d world i feel like it's why we came here i was actually journaling about this after meditation i think a couple days ago and it's like we came here to experience like deep love and to have all of these like emotions. And the only way to feel them or to have that experience, we would have to like get in a body and we'd have to become, be here. I don't know. I just like, I'm so connected now that I'm like more present to like my feelings and my emotions. I don't even know. You just gave me a vision. It's almost uh, like scientifically like people talk about that the male brain is better to isolate problems and stuff so that's why like when there's a problem they try to make it small and go away and they do a better job at it but the man came down almost like okay let's they help it to be more grounded and the feminine energy that came down to add flavor to it and so like i personally find that like a lot of the men outing is grounded. We talk about 3D stuff, but the feminine energy adds flavor to it. It makes it everything more colorful. Like you look at the way they dress, the way they do their hair and decorate what men is just plain or whatever. It's, it's less interesting, but that yeah. have the yin and the yang, the balance and, and the colors. Yeah. It's like the man is like the structure and like the feminine is like it's the, the flow. Yeah, it's like the experience and it's actually the expression, like almost like the expression, right? You got your structure and your expression and one can't actually live without the other. Like we actually need each other and to balance each other out, especially when we're in our emotions and right. So sometimes like the feminine will be like this, 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 and we'll like spew out so many different things. And really at the core of it is just, we have all these emotions that are moving through us and we don't actually know how to express them. And I just think it's so amazing that the masculine has the ability to just sit there and be completely present with the feminine and just like see her and hear her and like hold that space for her. Because when he does that, she just melts. And so all these emotions actually, I feel like they almost like, like transmute themselves maybe. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like that presence you know, with the expression actually just like creates this amazing flow. It's fabulous. Like, <laughs> So tell me about your plant medicine journey. Hmm. My ayahuasca? Yeah. And then you also talked about there was a plant medicine that you did that opens up more the hearts as well. Yeah. So I've actually been able over the last about year and a half, had quite a few experiences. Um, my first one was in Costa Rica. Um, I spent a week there and then I went again, I did Costa Rica again, and that was um, ay- ayahuasca. And I feel like, you know, for me, as I learn about these different plants, their abilities to us, like they connect us to spirit. And so I feel like ayahuasca, she's the teacher, she's the grandmother. And, you know, it, she's all truth and she just shows you everything. You know, she doesn't pick or choose and she doesn't make it this beautiful ride or this beautiful journey. She's just like, this is a life review. This is everything that's happening. And you kind of get what she's like passing on to you. And then I've been able to have these other experiences where it's a mix of a lot of various different plants. And there's compounds that have been created, which are really, really amazing that actually get you back into your body. And so they're a body centered and it actually opens up your heart. And so it's really, really beautiful is that when you allow your heart to open 
and you allow your mind to follow, you can actually do life. And I like with the, you know, I call it the innocent wisdom of a child, but also come from a place of being able to be very clear and directed and not have the mind like running your life. And so I've like fallen in love with these experiences so much because for someone like me that had spent such like a long part of my life disconnected, being able to connect to myself and especially as a feminine and feel safe in my body and then allow this heart to just like open. And then you just look at the world and I already love people. So you can imagine me like doing some plants. I'm like, I know, like people are my favorite thing, you know, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> and so it's just, it's so beautiful. And with these other ones that I've been able to try, it's interesting because I have a more sense of self and I have a love more self loving, more nurturing to self, but I am able to do life completely different. So I'm not going at it from the push, try, accomplish, achieve, award, award. I'm doing it with more of a free flow and an absolute trust and like trusting myself and trusting that the universe, God, creator, who is ever out there assisting us is actually opening the doorways that all I have to do is just be like excited and in a high vibration. And then therefore like possibilities I could never could imagine are going to appear. And it's kind of like how life really is, right? When you start yeah. looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> what comprises of the compound and is it hallucinogenic as well? Um, so they call like flower essences, but there's the use of like, um, Kana, Sassafras. There's all these different like compilations that like, was, Ursula was telling about flower medicine. Is that kind of the same? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. It's just, it's kind of a new thing. We call it for purposes of communication of flower essence, but there's actually somebody who's, um, comes from a thousand year lineage who has actually been creating different compounds to take each person on a more individualized experience versus like the teacher you actually can come from a place of like grounded centeredness open heart but then actually connect to the universe and spirit and so like it's a more loving journey and it's definitely like i always suggest to people like if you're gonna do ayahuasca like you really need to know how to guide yourself you really have to have an inner knowing and a deep understanding of the mind because if you just throw somebody out there who's not had their experience then sometimes they can go in the wrong direction and if you're you know going to go to a jungle like there really needs to be some type of like guidance and so these compilations are much more beautiful like they're definitely great to start with where's the tradition from uh it's actually from peru So the person that's created this actually is out of Peru and it's a thousand year like shaman lineage. And he's been working with plants for like a really, really long time. And so, yeah, he's actually been able to curate these beautiful experiences. Cause I know this is becoming like mainstream now that we have like YouTube and all these things. And I just hear people just going off on these journeys into jungles and, you know, hearing all these really (laughs) fascinating stories. And for me, like, honestly, if people are going to do it, I think what really matters is the energy of the facilitators, the energy of the space, and then the ability to have people that are going to facilitate and help you process because it's like having a dream and then trying to come out of it and process it with our human mind because it's kind of all over the place. So sometimes it's really great to have somebody who can actually process you with you. So you're really just getting into the core of the experience Versus yeah. like, it told me to go like move to Africa and sell everything. And you hear these stories, right? <laughs> when you talk about opening the heart, does it last like for a few days or does it last like a long time or everyone's experiences it like varies? Yeah, I think it, it does. I, my personal experience is once you can connect on that level, you can always access it. Like to me, it feels like this portal of the universe is opening up and then this amazing, just beautiful, like, I'm going to call it like sparkly pink white light is just really just like, like fills your entire body. And I have never felt that deep, intimate love in my entire life. And it's in, in those moments that you actually realize that you are like, one with everything like the earth 
nature, the animals, the ocean, people, the universe. And you can just like, you have that sense of wholeness and oneness through the experience. So once you tap into that, it's always there because it's a sensation you can never get away. And so actually it's one of the things that really helped me through the last couple of months because it, it was not easy at all. But I would just like sometimes just lay there in, in meditation and I would just imagine that energy just like filling and going through my body and just like tapping into like this deep intimate love. And it's so beautiful. It's hard to describe, but I know that once everybody has, you know, used this modality, they all know what, what I'm talking about. And they're like, yes, yeah. I felt that, I felt that. Yeah. You know, some people have the perception that, and I know that I used to have this perception as well. Hey, you awakening that you supposed to be like a Buddha, like a Eckhart Tolle and be like so Zen. And so, Hey, you, what you're going through a tough times or are you getting upset? Like what's wrong with you? And they think that it shouldn't have happened. And I guess what what's beautiful about you is that you're so open and so real about your experiences that if you can just talk us through like the, the challenges that you've, you've going through or have gone through recently. And so how real it was and what are some of the things that it helped you to transcend beyond those experiences? I think we talked about what you just said about, fully experiencing the feelings but uh, you also talked about surrendering and, and other practices that you did as well yeah thank you I think that the last four months have probably been I don't like to use the word hard but they really have been like the hardest months of my entire life I knew that I had to close my business I I knew that I had to surrender and let go of that experience and simultaneously I also ended a relationship with someone that I had a really, a really tremendous amount of deep love for. And there was just components like... And what was your restaurant forced to shut down because of the COVID? Yeah. And so um, because of COVID, we went from serving 2,000 people a day to 60. And we ended up having to close three restaurants. And we just didn't realize that 80% of our business actually was coming from the tourists. And so once the tourists stopped and then the locals weren't really eating out anymore and there was just like so much fear around that, we had to like make it like a business decision if this was like, like how long could we like hold out? And even though we went through all of that, we just, we had to make a business decision and close and like surrendering, like it's really great when everybody writes about it and talks about it and it's like such a great theory, (laughs) but I can tell you. (laughs) Like, I actually want to cry. Like, surrendering is probably the hardest thing I ever went through. Like, letting go and, and like, releasing an attachment. Like, it sounds fabulous. Oh, we'll just get rid of your attachment. Oh, you know, just surrender. And I'm like, surrender is really, like, it just means that you're willing to let go and accept and acknowledge and be present to and embrace and then trust yourself and trust the universe. And, I mean, I would wake up days going, like, like who's talking to me? Who am I trusting right now? Like my business is gone. My relationship is over. Like, how do I know? Like, how do I even know that like I'm going to be okay? And I just had to like through every moment, you know, just there was weeks like I didn't even leave the house, you know? And so like, I look like this beautiful finished product. that's like, Oh, life is so amazing. But you know, at, at the core of it is like, I really had to like, just center back to myself. And, you know, I think Michael Singer has that book, um, their surrender experience. And I thought like, or experiment, surrender experiment. And I was like, surrender just means, oh, you just give up. I'm done. I'm over it. And then you just like walk away. But really, truly surrender means like, I give up my worldly attachment to things and I trust the universe and I trust that life is actually going to provide for me like something more amazing oh and you know of course all the best things that happen to us in life like we wouldn't have thought of them right like I never grew up thinking I'm gonna own a restaurant and then like letting it go like letting my ego go with that like yeah it brings up a lot of emotions um yeah I think like what you touched on is it's easy to let go of attachment when it's something that you don't care that much about. Hey, should I go to like Disneyland today or should I go to the, another theme park? Like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll surrender to what my kids want. Like, it's not, it, well, I guess that's a form of surrender, but geez, like the, some of the biggest gifts I come from 
the biggest attachment our ego has, whether it's, it's the family member, a loved ones, or a loved possessions that an identity you've had for some time, even a health health situation sure. that like I'm this healthy person, I can walk, I can do all sorts of exercise. And suddenly, like you may lose a limb or something, and what happens? It, it's an incredible journey. But once you able to to come to it at the later end, you start to see. Wow, there's a new sense of emotion. Like for me, some of a lot of it is freedom, but it's yeah. new sense of part of you you haven't felt in a long time. I remember moving my going through minimalism. Part of me is like resenting. It's like, why is my wife like taking over the closet? And it was my decision, it wasn't hers. But it was my decision to minimalize and move to a different closet. But part of it was, was resenting. Is oh my god, I, I'm throwing away stuff that I'm emotionally attached to. And then once it's all completed, wow, I feel so much lighter. Like I used to need all this stuff for me yeah. to feel whole and complete, or at least it's the illusion that I needed it. But now it's like, wow, I only have so little, but yet I feel even more free. I can maybe get new stuff if I wanted to, but yeah. I don't need that much anymore. Wow. And my clothes compared to your business and real relationship, I would say is, is so much easier to surrender to. So what you have yeah. gone through, uh, so much respect. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because I gave up financial security and stability. Like I went from highly, highly successful. We did, you know, 7.2 million last year to actually being on unemployment. And at first it was really hard to like accept that, right? Because I'm used to a certain amount of like stability and structure and all of these things, but we are right. Then you start looking at it and I'm like, I actually just didn't really need most of that stuff. And I'm like, did it actually, I don't actually really care too much. It was just like, I could just buy it. So it didn't even matter. And actually simplifying my life. I, we really don't need as many things as we think that we do. Yeah. Like, really, like, I don't even really feel now that I'm okay, sorry, you know, it's much easier now that I'm out of like, the bottom at this point. But I, I just realize I'm like, there's so much more enjoyment when you don't have to be putting out so much and then actually having to continue to create in order to bring that in as well, right? Yeah. When you start creating from a sense of like trust and flow, like your world lights up. Yeah. Because now, you know, now I realize like anything that I'm going to do, I'm only going to do that my heart is completely like, like yeah. into. Like all of these opportunities came when we we're closing, people wanted to buy us, they wanted to do all these things. And then like my heart's just not in it. I'd only be doing it for the money. And I said no to all those things. And I said, no, I can only do what my heart is into and what I'm fully passionate about. And then all of a sudden this new idea popped in and, <clears throat> and I'm going to do a retreat. And I just like lit up. And it's like, it's just all of a sudden and it's happening and like people are coming and there's no effort and all there is is like joy. And financially, I'm not really focusing on that. I'm just focusing on the, the vibration and the energy that like, it's just like igniting inside of me. Yeah. And I think so, like you highlighted a, a great point. Many people think of surrender as like having no desire, no drive, no passion, and just, hey, like take me away or whatever. But you said it, that it's just allowing, allowing what comes through naturally that you're passionate about and that you can still set goals. But at the same time, you're listening with your inner voice, right? You're not just like, hey, I need to make money. I need to do, do, do. You just, human being is like allowing, um, being in tune and being in, in, the, in sync with the universal um, energy and the, and the flow of it. Yeah. I mean, it really is like, surrendering to what is oh my gosh it's liberated like I feel liberated like through this experience when I was going through it I was like what surrender let go this is all ridiculous who made this stuff up you know like this is not why I'm here and then when you come through to the other side and you realize that the quality of life and connection that you can have like to yourself and to others like there's no words to even describe it yeah. Oh, it's lovely. I remember our mentor, like Tony Robbins, he used to say, there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> and, and I believe that that's when he was in his younger days and 
but now that he's he's grown so much more spiritually and life happening for you, not to you. And whereas before as an achiever, it's like there's a will, there's a way. If someone wasn't being transformed, he said he'll kick them through the door, like break through. And so it's just not forcing things to happen. Like whereas like some of the society slogan, like no blood, no tease, or something like no success or yeah. something like equivalent. Now, when you talked about liberation, what does that mean for you? Because like energetically wise, you just felt, oh, wow. Like what a, it's almost felt liberation is as good as orgasm. So can you describe what, what liberation is to you? It's like this like sense of freedom. Like I have this tremendous amount of like sense of freedom now. And I was actually like searching for freedom. Like I want to be free to do this. You know, I thought that I was kind of like locked in this box and I couldn't do all these things. Like I couldn't leave Maui. I couldn't change my business. I couldn't do all of these things. And what I realized that was really just a construct of the mind that I had imprisoned myself in my own mind. And when you really start to like, you know, dig deep and find the root and then the different belief systems that you're running and the different patterns and you just fully embrace them and bring them from the subconscious conscious, there's an actual like feeling of liberation that gets to happen because I was always free. But for some reason, I believe that I wasn't like this needed to happen in order for me to feel this way. When you realize that you can just feel anyway, and that life is actually going to provide for you. I mean, this is like even trusting my intuition. I didn't even know how to trust my intuition. I didn't even know what that meant. And I'm like, I don't even know. They're like, trust your gut, trust your intuition. And for the feminine, not to be able to like understand trusting her intuition, that was like such a disconnect. And now I realize that we actually have this like inner compass. And so once I started like listening to like, my, like that inner voice, but it's not the inner voice that has like conditioning and programming. It's the inner voice that feels different once you start differentiating between the two, but it feels more connected to something bigger than yourself. And it has this beautiful gift that it provides because it seems limitless. And so for me, like, I felt like I was just liberated from that old self, that old paradigm and the old conditioning and like the programming. Of course, like I'm not there yet. Like every single day I've learned something about myself. I'll see like a thought run by and I'm like, where did you come from? (laughs) So I'm always going to be right on that journey. But I think like just that, like just able to be like truly yourself and truly authentic and vulnerable is liberating. And I think um, it does help like going through some of the plant journey that you described because once you've opened up your heart and you know what, love or feeling whole is like you can start to differentiate a bit more of what what is that pure heart driven guidance versus the fear based what if you met that guy what if that guy is is going to be bad to you like is that from your heart guiding you or is that from fear the heart is not go this way go that way it doesn't come with the baggage of fear is that kind of how you receive it and for sure and you know i'm still on that learning process I'm still kind of like trying to differentiate between like, what is fear? What is all the different aspects of that? I think the plants have definitely um, allowed me to access more of my subconscious and bring it conscious because once you're able to access the subconscious part of you, it actually, as soon as it becomes into your awareness, it actually gets to disappear because now you can make a conscious choice. Like, am I going to operate from that belief system or, you know, oh, wow, I've been doing this, or I've created this over and over. Like I've had the same boyfriend, just different names over and over again, right? They all had the same pattern. And so once you start creating life from a conscious choice, then I think that's where you start being able to connect to like the intuition and the the inner knowing and the the sense of self. So Mariah, if you can go back in time and let's just say reversed what would happen to the restaurant and to your relationships, but then you also take away the person that you've become. Mm -hmm. Let's just say your restaurant can continue to open, continue to smash records and your relationship would continue maybe the two years prior. Would you have preferred none of this has happened? Is that like a very close race or is it not even close? No, no. 
I think today I would absolutely say like I have loved looking back on my life like I appreciate all of my experience and learning and learning about myself and I just like I think all of those experiences they're just beautiful teachers and they have offered me like so many gifts if you ask me while I'm in the moment of the experience I most definitely will try to change it yes 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 definitely <laughs> but when you get to the other side when you cross the rainbow bridge and you can look back and go like that man was a beautiful teacher and he gave me such a beautiful gift and my business like it taught me how to be in the world and how to create and how like creating and connecting to people can like change people's whole day and their whole experience in that moment those are like amazing gifts yeah. so I, I'm not changing anything <laughs> Well, I want to say I, I appreciate you um, for sharing everything about your journey and just being so real, not being afraid to share that there's still stuff that you have to go through. You're not the perfect self or the perfect mold or if there is ever uh -huh. one. No. And if you were to say any parting words of wisdom, maybe not wisdom, just in your own personal standpoint of someone that's going through the similar journey as you, what can you offer them in terms of from your own experience? I think what I appreciated the most about my experience is that I was able to like find parts of me that I never even knew existed and that it truly, truly has all been about self-love and really, really accepting all aspects of who I am and loving every single part of that because I realized that I was so hard on myself. I was so critical and I feel like those being so critical of ourselves and feeling like a failure or feeling like you didn't succeed or that you lost something like it really just made the journey harder. But I feel like if you could just do, I mean, I remember growing up on, you know, Whitney Houston singing about loving yourself. Right. And I'm going, of course I love myself. And when you realize that your internal world is so important the beauty and the love that you can like find inside of yourself that is like your compass and once you can connect to that and love yourself so much then your capacity to love everybody else and everything around you it just like amplifies mm -hmm. so it was like kind of like find yourself love yourself like and I don't mean find yourself because you're lost but it's just like start getting to know every single part of you Start getting to like accept and appreciate like who you are. And then you get to pick and choose like, which one do I want to take with me? Which one is serving me? What's not serving me? Who do I want to be? And it's a never ending process. So I feel like I'm probably like 10% on that journey. <laughs> yeah. So um, if people want to stay in touch with you and, and continue to learn about your journey, like uh, do you have any social media channel that they could follow? Um, I'm on Facebook. From Mariah Brown or maybe like my life MJB on Instagram okay I'll put the links in the show notes and um, thank you so much for thank sharing you your journey and I'd love to continue to see how you evolve and how interesting your story um, turned out to be so thank you so much love thank you sis you. love you thank you